welcome back to my channel. So today I am once again tackling one of those Pinterest photos that has been haunting me for multiple years. And I'm going to be recreating this photo that you guys have probably seen on your feed too and I've also been sent it a few times by you guys. Um, and this dress is just absolutely gorgeous. It's like super cottage core and also kind of vintage, so you guys know I obviously love it already. And I've been saving this video for a really long time until I came across the perfect fabric. And that recently happened at Joann's. And I found this super gorgeous embroidered fabric. Um, and I got four yards of it just to be super extra and make this dress super big. And while I was at Joann's, I also got some pearl buttons and some ribbons that match the one on the dress. Um, and then for the lining, I also just got this white cotton fabric, and I think I got two yards of this one. And honestly, the picture that I found of this dress, this is the only one I can find of it, and I don't know what brand it is, and I don't have any like back views of it, so I honestly don't even know the length of it. And so we have a lot of fun things to play around with this time, so I think we should get to work. So for this project, I'm obviously using a kind of sheer fabric to go over top of it. So when I cut out my pieces, I am planning to like baste one layer to a lining piece. So if you're making this dress without an overlay fabric, I would recommend that you just cut out the amount for the lining pieces out of all of your fabric. And then you'll skip the first step of this process and then everything from there will be exactly the same. So the first pieces here are the front pieces of the bodice. And you're basically going to cut twice as many out of your lining fabric as your overlay. The next piece here is the back piece, and so we're going to use two of these to make either side of the back, so there's going to be a total of four panels, and one side of it should be straight, and the other side should have a one inch slant. Here I have our big ruffle piece, um, and I cut out three of these for a total of 180 inches all the way around. And then this is the skirt piece, and this is actually just the back piece right now, it's just a simple circle skirt. But for the front piece, you're going to cut the same thing as the back, except you're going to fold it in half and you're going to cut a straight line that takes off an inch and a half away from the center of it. And that's how we can make that cute little princess waistline. And then the very last piece we have here is just the strap piece. Um, and I just cut one that was two and a half inches by 45 and then I cut it into two pieces later. Well, our two guest stars today are Oreo and Chloe. So if you hear pitter pattering around my room, that's what the noise is. Or are you sitting on the pieces I need? But to get started on the sewing process, the first pieces we're going to work with are all of the bodice pieces. And we're going to take one of our sheer overlay pieces and we're going to baste it on top of one of the lining pieces. So we're going to do that with all of the overlay pieces by pinning them to one of the lining pieces and putting a basting stitch all the way around. So that means we're going to do it to the front piece, the two side pieces, and the four back pieces. Honestly, I need to put down a tablecloth so you guys can like actually see what I'm doing, but I just don't want to move Oreo. And now that all of these pieces have been basted, we're going to start assembling the bodice. So we're going to start this off by working with the center piece. Oh, and by the way, right now we're basically going to be making two bodices, one out of all of our overlay pieces, and one out of just our lining pieces. So all the steps we're doing with these pieces, we're going to do on these pieces too. But we're going to start off with the center piece and then I'm going to take either of our side pieces and lay these out pretty side to pretty side and pin them together. And now I'm going to put this to the side for a minute and we're going to work on all of the back pieces. And they all have one straight edge and one slanted edge. So I'm going to take two of these pieces and put their slanted edges together and pin them this way. And the smaller side goes towards the bottom and the larger side goes towards the top. And now we're going to bring the front in and we're going to pin one of these pieces to either side. And now we're going to sew all of these seams. And now that we have both of our bodices sewn, it's time to start adding on the fun embellishments. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ruffled trim that I have and I'm going to top stitch it down the center of the front. And then on top of that, I'm going to add on these pearl beads in between. And then I'm also going to take just this regular ribbon and do two stripes like this. And then on one of them, I'm also going to take this really cute like doily trim and I'm going to top stitch this ribbon so that we only have like the very edge of it poking out. 
And you can really do this however you want, add as many embellishments as you want, or as little, but I'm just kind of going off of the reference photo for mine. Well, I was trying to serge all of my fabric to get rid of all the raw edges, but my serger ran out of thread, so I bought new thread to re-thread it. And as I'm putting that in, it refuses to work anymore. So I have re-threaded it probably like seven times now. So I think it's time to just give up. Like, I'm like, when do I call it quits? And like, I don't even understand how this is like working because literally the needle is getting unthreaded. Like, I, I don't understand. And now we're going to put the bodice to the side for just a minute. And I'm going to work with this long strap piece that we cut out. And all we're going to really do is fold it in half this way and sew it down all the way across and then turn it right side out so that we have our finished strap pieces. And now that we have this long piece, I'm going to fold it in half and cut it into two equal pieces. And now we can bring our bodice back in and I'm going to pin our straps right where the side piece connects to the center piece. And I'm going to pin these so that they are facing downward. And then we're also going to pin the other side of the strap to somewhere on the back here. Um, but to make sure that it's going to fit as comfortably, I'm first going to baste these ones here, try it on and pin it where I want. And then I'm going to come back and pin the back of these straps in the right spots. And once these strap pieces are all in place, we can bring in our lining bodice piece and I'm going to lay these pieces pretty side to pretty side and pin them all together. And once that's all pinned, we're going to sew across the top edge. And now we can turn this right side out and we have a finished top edge. So I just got back from the iron because I wanted to press down the top seam to make sure that it was all nice and flat before we did the next step because now we're going to be taking this super cute ribbon and we're going to just top stitch it all across the top edge for some extra detail. And this is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to guide it all the way across the top. Um, but for the very center, because this is kind of a v-neck shape, I just found the center of the ribbon and folded it in half and just sewed a very tiny diagonal here. And that's kind of giving it a more crisp v-neck shape. So that part's going to go in the center here. All right, well, that's all that we can pretty much do on the bodice for now. So it's time to finally work on the skirt. Okay, so to start on the skirts, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the two skirt pieces out of our outer fabric and the two skirt pieces out of our lining fabric, and we're going to sew those pieces together down their side seams. Oh, actually, before we do this, we're going to take the back piece, so the one that doesn't have like the front cut out, um, and we're going to fold it in half and we're going to cut an eight inch slit down the back so that we have room for our zipper later. And we're going to do the same thing on the back piece too. And I'm also going to add a zigzag stitch down the raw edges to finish them up. And now that we have both of our skirts all sewn, I'm going to take them and I turned them both pretty side out. And I'm going to put them on top of each other and pin their side seams together to make sure that they are all lined up. And now that the waist seam is all matched up, I'm going to add two parallel basting stitches all across the top edge. And now we can finally start ruffling up the skirt. So I'm going to bring back in our bodice. And right now I'm only going to be attaching the skirt to our outer layer. So I'm going to lift the other one up and just pin it to this one. And I'm going to start this process off by matching up the little corner of the front to the diagonal on the front of the skirts, because that's going to be the most important piece to line up. And then I'm going to match up the backs together too first. 
And then I'm going to pull on two of our basting stitches on the same side of the fabric to finally start gathering it all up. And then I'm just going to space out my ruffles evenly and pin these pieces together. And now that this is all pinned, before we start sewing, we're actually going to take the lining of the bodice piece. We're going to kind of pull the lining to the side and then wrap it around the skirt to face the other side of the bodice. These pieces are pretty side to pretty side. And then we're going to match up all of their seams and move all of our pins so that they go through all of these layers. And this part is definitely like the most tricky step. So if you're having a really hard time with it and you don't really care to have a totally finished seam here, you can just pin the bodice basically the way we were doing it on the last step. But instead of going through only the outer bodice layer, you're just going to go through both at the same time. But like usual, I am just being a little bit extra here. And once this is all pinned, we're just going to go ahead and sew right across it. And now we can turn this back right side out and the skirt should be attached and the back should also be fully lined. And now we can just go ahead and take out these basting stitches. And once again, after that is sewn, I'm just going to be adding more ribbon across the waistline. Well, this dress is looking insanely cute, but my power just went out. So none of my lights are working and my machine won't turn on. So, but the next step is going to be adding on the ruffles. So I'm just going to take all of my ruffle pieces and pin all of their short sides together so that they are in one big loop. Um, and then I'm going to wait for the power to turn back on. And the power's back. Now don't mind this slightly awkward view, but the next step is a little bit easier to do standing up because we basically want to take the giant loop that we just sewed and divide it into four equal sections. So I'm just going to stand it up like this and put a pin at the very top right here. And then I'm going to make my way to the other end, making sure to keep everything the way it's laying. And again, put a pin in it. And then I'm going to line up the two pins that we just put in. And then again, I'm going to mark out each end. And now we are going to have to put two parallel basting stitches across the top edge of this. But before we do that, because of the style that I want to do here, I'm actually going to fold over this edge for an inch and a half. And then I'm going to add my basting stitches all the way across about an inch away from the top edge here, because I want to leave like a cute little ruffle off the very top. And so I'm just going to make sure to keep this folded over all the way around. And I'm going to add my basting stitches starting with stopping at either of my side pins. And now we're going to bring our skirt back in. And again, we're only going to be attaching the ruffles to the outer layer of the skirt, so not the lining. And I already went ahead and divided it into four equal sections, very similarly to how we did the ruffles. And I'm going to pin all of the quadrants together. But because we want that cute little ruffle detailing that I mentioned, instead of attaching these pieces pretty side to pretty side like we normally would like this, we're actually going to be attaching them pretty sides both up. And we're going to put the ruffle one over top of the skirt and then pin these together. So we're essentially going to actually top stitch the ruffle on. And then like we did earlier, we're just going to pull on the basting stitches to gather them into these sections. Whew. And now that it's all pinned, we can sew it about an inch away from the top of the ruffle edge. And now that our ruffle is attached, we can go ahead and take out our basting stitches. And now the two last steps that we have to do is we have to add a hem all along the bottom by folding it over twice and stitching across it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add an invisible zipper down the back. And after we finish all of that, the dress is officially done. And here's the finished dress. This 
is seriously like the cottage core dress of my dreams. I am in love with how it turned out and I felt like a little forest fairy prancing around in it. It's like the perfect combination between like cottage core and princess core I think, which I guess is probably just fairy core. But it is insanely satisfying to like finally knock down those projects that have been like haunting you for like six months and I honestly could not be happier with the result. I was also a little bit nervous doing this sort of waistline because I've never done one before but I'm actually really happy with how it turned out and it was surprisingly easy to do and I think it just makes such a dreamy silhouette. I also wanted to mention I know I've been really bad about updating my patterns but I am going to be working on a pattern for this dress so hopefully it'll be out before too long but you can always check out my other patterns on my website right now and um, they're always linked in the description box and if you make this dress for yourself you can always tag me on Instagram I love seeing your guys' creations and other than that I hope you have a good rest of your day and I will see you next time.